come to the time of prayer meeting tonight, Wednesday night. You know, I just thought I'll open up with a word. In the book of Psalm, we give glory and praises to our Heavenly Father, for He is good and His love endures forever. You know, His love is the reason why we're here. His love and His guidance and His protection over us as we depart with our own plans and our own journey throughout the week, from the first day of the week to this very moment, that our loving God never forsakes us. So at this time, I would like to greet and welcome um, our, our leader, Pastor Willie Bapu, and the wife, Tiana, and the family. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I would like to welcome you. Also, with all the ministers, the leaders from each division, uh, everyone that is tuning in tonight, Church of the Living God from Sydney, Australia, New Zealand, in America, or those who are um, unable to understand the Samoan language and you're able to uh, watch our program tonight, you know, in the name of Jesus Christ, I would love to uh, welcome you guys this evening. At this time, before we get into the Word of God, I would like to ask the group if they may open a song before we get into the Word of God. Thank you. to us as we depart throughout the daylight Lord with our own plans and our own journey but thank you Lord you have never forsaken us that we're able to gather here once again for your online so we give the glory and honor that you will deserve gracious Lord our Heavenly Father as you see from heavens above that we're about to open your word may you open their hearts and their mind give us the understanding the encouragement so we may strengthen ourselves, Lord, 
so we may, may have that passion to keep striving for your work. Blessed every one of us, those who are listening, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The word will be looking to the book of 2 Kings chapter 11. 2 Kings chapter 11. If you have time, please go through the whole chapter. That will be touch base with our word of encouragement tonight. But in 2 Chronicles chapter 23 as well, it elaborates more and it goes more deeper into the book of 2 Kings chapter 11, the story that we're going to look into tonight. Well, this chapter 11, the book of Kings, 2 Kings, there was a, a king by the name of uh, Ahaziah. Ahaziah was a man that was a king of Judah, the sixth king. But he had a father also as a wicked king by the name of Jehoram. But thank God there was a good king, which he was the third king of Judah after the split of Israel when the ten tribes moved up to north and the two tribes went down south by the name of Jehoshaphat. Coming down to the time of ah Ahaziah, when he passed away, the next person that should be king is his son by the name of Joash. But the problem is, as we look from not only Jehoshaphat, Jehoram, and Ahaz, Isaiah, you know, this is uh, all in, in the royal family. So we all knew, if you look in the book of 2 Kings chapter 11, Joash would be the child that uh, be the next king. But soon, if you look in the, into the, um, chapter 11, see when uh, Ahaziah, mother, has found out that he has passed away by the name of uh, Athaliah. Athaliah knew that her son has passed away. And she knew there will be a time that she will no longer be a queen of the kingdom of Judah. But the Bible explains Athaliah, her plan was to kill every male child in the royal family. So as she went to have a command and her plan was to kill every grandchild and all her grandchildren, all the males, so no one can be the king of Judah, thank God there was a woman, a sister of Ahaziah, by the name of Jehosheba. Jehosheba is a sister of Ahaziah. As Jehosheba found out that Athaliah is going to kill all the grandkids, she immediately went to grab her nephew by the name of Johash. Jehosheba went and grabbed Johash and took him to the temple of God. As we all know the story, Jehosheba has a, had a husband that worked in the priesthood in the house of God by the name of Jehoiada. Jehoiada was a priest and also a husband of Jehosheba. So as they knew and they heard about this evil, wicked queen by the name of Athaliah, that she murdered all her grandchildren, because she had that selfish mind that she wanted to be the queen. Keep in mind, this is the genealogy or the lineage of the um, where Jesus is from. So if it wasn't for Johash, there'll be no Jesus. But this is how we know that God works in his mysterious way, that God, the Spirit of God, was working in, the, in, in uh, Je Jehoshiba. And saved this one and only son of Ahaziah by the name of Johash and took him into the temple of God. You know, in Athaliah's mind, that all her grandkids are, are dead. For six years, this queen has become the leader of Judah. 
Jehoshaphat, Jehoram, Ahaziah, it should be Johash. But Athaliah came and took over the leadership role in the kingdom of Judah. This evil, wicked woman. And you might be questioning to yourself, who is this woman? Who is this woman, Athaliah? But if you look into the uh, more into in the book of uh, 2 Kings, her parents is King Ahab and also Queen Jezebel. And we all know that King Ahab is a wicked king and an evil king and also with the wicked evil queen by the name of Jezebel. This is Athaliah's parents. So who's, who's uh, Ahab? Who's Jezebel? We all understand the story. Uh, Ahab wanted to have the vineyard next to his house and went and, and, and uh, you know for the story Jezebel went and planned and killed the owner the Naboth, the owner of the vineyard, just to satisfy of Ahab's heart and desire. Not only that, in the time of Elijah, Jezebel also killed many prophets and all God's prophets. And she brought all the prophets of Baal in the sight of God's nation. So what happened to Athaliah? She basically continued what her parents did. Not only that she killed her own grandkids, but also reigned for six years in the kingdom of Judah, but also brought her God into, into God's um, nation, God of Baal. But if you look in the Bible, it says that she even built a temple of Baal. She even had a priesthood of Baal, just like how the temple of God, and there is a priesthood of God. You know, I want to go straight into our key text for tonight. And we'll just go deeper into what's the word uh, of this um, story that we're going to see into tonight. 2 Kings chapter 11, verse 10. And it says, And to the captains over hundreds did the priests give the king David spears and shields that were in the temple of the Lord. After six years, on the seventh year, the priest of Jeho uh, Jehoiada thought that it's time. This is the time. This is the time that Joash must step up to be the king of Judah. So what Jehoiada, uh, Jehoiada did, he called all the, the leaders of the armies. And he said to these leaders, I want you guys to divide a third. You guys guard the king's palace. The other third must be guard with the gate of Shul. But if you look in the in the second chronicles, it says the gate of foundation. And the other third, I want you to guard the gates at the back of the garden, meaning at the back of the palace. Because what Jehoiada is planning to do is to make sure it's been guarded and there is no escape. And Jehoiada says, if there's anyone that comes and, 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 and trying to do something against you, you have the right to kill them. Going to verse 10, our key text, it says, And to the captains, there were five captains, if you look in the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 23. It names the five leaders. And to the captains over, uh, over hundreds, did the priests give the king spears and shield. And who was this king? It's talking about King David. Over 200 years, the spears, the shields, the javelin that David been using at his prime time has been put into the house of God. 200 years later, this story comes up. And Jehoiada says to these leaders of these armies of these guys, I want you guys to use these 
Use this against the army, uh, the, the enemies. My brothers and sisters, I want to title our word tonight. Defeating your enemies. Defeating your enemies. You know, this Queen of the Liar, she has brought not only evil things into God's nation, but also bringing all these different idols, the God of Baal, and all these wicked things into God's nation. And this is what Jehoiada did on the seventh year of the time when Joash was in the temple of God, because mind you, when he escaped, this little kid, Joash, for six years, he had been staying in the house of God. Six years. And it says, our key text, Jehoiada says, you know what? It's time. I want you guys to use these spears. David's spears. David's shield. David's javelin. You know, I don't know how you would think, you know, but to me, you know, I would be so honoured and privileged to be using the weapons that King David had been used um, in his prime time. But uh, I want to share with us tonight, you know, we're not going to look at the physical weapons that these guys have been using to be able to overcome and attack against the enemies of Athaliah and her evil, wicked people. But I want to see there is our spiritual weapons as well that King David has left inside in the temple of God. Let's look in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 16 and 17. It says, Know ye not that you are the temple of God, and that you are the Spirit of God dwelling in you, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which is uh, which temple you are. So first of all, we're not going to look at the physical temple of what King Solomon has built in the time of Judah. But we're going to look at our temple. It's not talking about the building, but we're talking about me and you. There's something of these weapons that David kept spiritually in his temple. And we're going to look at tonight these four weapons. 1 Samuel 17 verse 45. Then, then said David to Philistines, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield. For I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. At this time when he was a young person, David, he, uh, the father of Jesse goes to David, David, I want you to take some food for your, for your brothers that is at war. So as David went to, the, um, to take the food, and he sees they were hiding. And then David said, what are you guys are hiding? And then Saul and, the, and all the soldiers of Israel are saying, oh, we can't, we can't, we can't go against that Philistine. Look at that giant. It's impossible for us to overcome and defeat these enemies. You know, long story short, David goes, give it to me. I'll do it. I'll finish this battle. Even though King Saul said, take my, my armor, take my helmet, take my shield. The Bible says it was too heavy, he wouldn't fit. And he said, he doesn't need it. Or he went against the Philistine and the giant of Goliath. It's just five stones. The Bible says, I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. You can come to me with a shield and a spear and javelin, but all I come with is the name of the Lord of hosts. 
and it only took one stone to defeat the Philistines. The question is, is it because of the accurate of David slingshot straight, the stone straight to the forehead of, uh, of Goliath? Is it because of his strength? No, it's not. It's because he has come in the name of the Lord of hosts. And the first point that I want to make uh, understand for our, our listeners tonight, the first weapon that has been uh, left into the temple of God is trust. Trust in Jehovah. The trust that David had against Goliath and the Philistine has defeated his giant. My brothers and sisters, how many of us, when we see our Goliaths in life, we tend to hide? We tend to doubt God. But this is one of the strong weapons that King David has left inside the temple of God, which is your heart and my heart. The first is trust. And when we have that trust, I guarantee you, my brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter how big is the giant, all you know that what you have in your heart and your mind is the trust in God that is bigger than that Goliath. Trust, having full confidence, God can overcome the impossible things in your life and my life. So this is one of the weapons that I want to share tonight that David kept in his heart was trust in Jehovah. The second, Psalm 86 verse 5 and 6 For thou, Lord, are good and ready to forgive in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer and attend to the voice of my supplications. Not only trust, which is one of the spiritual weapons, but also prayer. You get power through prayer. You know, this is one thing that King David always does in his time. In the morning, in the evening, at night, he sees the Lord. The book of Psalm talks about a lot of songs and poems and prayer that King David does. Confession, praising, the need. Tonight, my brothers and sisters, it's a prayer meeting Wednesday night. And I want to ask, how many times have, you, have we been attending prayer meetings before this pandemic happened. You know, sometimes we think, oh, as long as we go to church on Sabbath, that's all that matters. My brothers and sisters, prayer meeting or ta'amanga includes into our ministry that gives us the strength and the power and the motivation to keep building God's work. And this is why it's really important because in the altar of incense inside the sanctuary, it symbolizes prayer. And God says, this now may be a sweet savior before my throne. My brothers and sisters, prayer is the key to overcome your obstacles. Prayer is a way to get power to destroy your enemy. Let's see what's another weapon. That King David had in his heart spiritually. 1 Samuel 18, verse 12. And Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. Saul immediately knew that the presence of God has departed from him and has been passed on to David. Even though David at that time did not realize 
But so saw it. He could see it. He can feel it. One of the weapons that we can defeat our enemies, my brothers and sisters, not only trust in Jehovah, prayer, that you get power through prayer, but also I want to bring this third point, or this third weapon, is that let the world can see that God is with you. God is with you. Just like how Saul saw David. He said he was afraid. He wasn't afraid because of David. He, he was afraid of David. It's because the presence of God was with David. How many of us, that, you know, when we come to church on Wednesday night on Sabbath, you know, we may see, oh, yes, we're all wearing ties and, and suits and dress beautiful clothes. You know, we cannot tell he's the one with God. He has the presence of God. But the ones that we can tell is the moment when they speak, when they talk. You know, let the world see you. That God is with you. You know, don't see it only the time when we come to church. But when you go out there in the world, when you go to work, when you go to school, when you go out there to, with your friends, are you uh, a, a character like God? Or are you just like everyone else outside the world? Let the world see that you have God. But don't let the world see you just like anyone else outside the world. Acts 6, uh, 13 verse 22, the fourth weapon. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave their testimony, and said, I have found David the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. The four spiritual weapons that King David had at his prime time was trust in Jehovah to destroy his enemies. Prayer every morning, every day, evening and night, communication with God. He found the key, the secret weapon, and able to have the strength. And that's why when you hear a lot of stories about King David in war, all you hear, he's been winning in his battles. Why? His connection with him and God. Also, the world could see, soul could see, that the presence of God was with David. And the fourth point I want to bring, that God says, A man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. You know, my brothers and sisters, this is the reason why the presence of God has been departed away from Saul. It's because Saul did not obey Saul's, uh, God's commandments. He did not listen, disobey. The word says that the Spirit of God has been departed from him. And what the book of Acts says, that God says, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my wills. My brothers and sisters, Fourth point, having a heart likeness of God. Having a heart likeness of God. Is your heart pure like God? Is my heart pure like God? Is your heart fulfilled with all the will that ye have been fulfilled of God's will through His Word? Have we been obeying God's word? Have we been obeying his commandments? Because if we have been obeying God's commandments, if we've been obeying God's word, 
then you have a heart like this of God. Even though that King David wasn't a perfect man, many times that he has sinned, and yet God says that the son of Jesse by the name of uh, David has a heart just like mine. So the question comes following, how do we use these weapons? Because there's really no point if we have these weapons and we don't know how to use them. You know, when you get into an army force, you know, you gotta, you, you don't just get a rifle. You gotta know how to load a rifle. You know, you know how to, to shoot, to trigger it. And this is like the spiritual, even though we have the trust, even though we do prayer, even though that we walk and have the character of God and also have the heart like God, but if we don't know how to use it, it's useless. Somehow our enemies will be able to defeat us. So the question is, how do we use it? I want to go back to our story. Well, we looked in the second book of uh, Kings chapter 11. After when the uh, the priest has told the, the, the armies to go depart. You know, and then when it's time that I'll bring the next king by the name of Joash. This time he was only seven years old. The Bible says that the priest took him out, Joash, at the front out in the, in the temple of God. And then say he anointed him and put the crown on him. And the Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 11, verse, uh, verse 14, She looked, and there was the king standing by the pillar. He was she, he's talking about Athaliah. Athaliah was hearing, everyone's cheering, everyone's rejoicing, everyone's is, uh, so happy. And, he, and she's wondering, what's all this noise? Where is it coming from? And they say, she looked, and there was the king. Standing by the pillar as the custom was. The officers and the trumpeters were beside the king. And all the people of the land were rejoicing and blowing trumpets. Then Athaliah tore her clothes and called out, Treasure! Treasure! She had thought that she killed all every grandchildren. But when she heard the trumpet, when she heard everyone rejoicing, she looks outside and there was the king, Joash. My brothers and sisters, the way we use trust, prayer, having a character like God, and having the heart, likeness of God, we use it when we serve God with joy. Joy. In hardship, we do it with joy. In happy times, we use it with joy. Even though there's a big life that we're facing, our giants in our individual lives, serve it with joy, trust. Other way we, um, to use these weapons. 2 Kings chapter 11, verse 18 says all the people of the land went to the temple of Baal and torn it down. So this is what happened. As Athaliah heard this, she went out there and she said, and, and Athaliah told her that she called for treasure, treasure. They were about to kill her at that very moment. These soldiers that the priest has given, the, the spears and the shield of King David. But the priest says, do not kill her. In the temple of God, take her outside. They took her with the palace, the king's palace, where she was dwelling, and they killed her at that very moment. When she, when when the armies have killed this woman, they also killed all the prophets of Baal. In that verse, verse eighteen, all the people of the land went to the temple of Baal and tore it down. They smashed the altars and their idols to pieces and killed Madden, the priest of Baal, in front of the altars. 
Then Jehoiada the priest posted guards at the temple of the Lord. So after when they killed uh, Athaliah the queen, after six years that she's been reigning in the, in the kingdom of Judah, they killed her at the, at the palace. Then Jehoiada, um, Jehoiada goes to the guards and the people of Judah. Let's go to the temple of Baal where Athaliah has built and the priesthood and let's torn it down. Destroy it! My brothers and sisters, we cannot trust the Lord. We cannot stay connected with God through prayer. We cannot show the character of God and also the likeness of heart of God if we don't destroy any Baal or any idols in your heart and my heart. In other words, destroy the things that interferes you from serving God. Destroy. My brothers and sisters, you cannot serve two masters. You know, and this is what happened. At the lawyer built her and her own God. But when God's time has come, when Joel has been crowned at the front pillar of the, uh, of the house of God, it says not only they killed Athaliah, but they destroyed the idols. Athaliah's idols, her gods, her temple, the priests, the followers of Baal has been killed. My brothers and sisters, we cannot trust in God. If there's any other idols in your heart and my heart that interferes us between us and God. We cannot use these weapons that King David has been using if there's anything else that is blocking us from serving God. We cannot say, Lord, we love you, Lord. I obey your commandments. And yet you're still working on Sabbath. He cannot say, Lord, I love you, Lord. I'll do anything what you say, whatever the Bible says. And yet, you still put your family first. Today, a lot of people think that idols are like statues, made out of statues like rocks, wood, objects. But the Bible clearly says, anything that you put first before God, is your idol. Money, desire of the world, that is your idol. If there's anyone out there that puts their mum and dad first before God, that is your idol. If there's any mum and dads that put their kids first and God second, then that's your idol. Because don't be surprised, there is parents out there that say, oh yes, I love my kids, yes, my, my plan for my kids is to, to have a degree to do this. And they see that it's not according to God's will by doing their things on Sabbath, and yet they said, oh, it's God's will for their better future. My brothers and sisters, don't compromise God's word. Put God first. Then you can see the trust. Then God can hear your prayers. Then the people outside in the world can see the likeness of God and also the heart. But if we don't destroy, if we don't destroy that idol that interferes you from serving God, I'm telling you, when you keep praying, you're trying to pray for the Lord. Please have mercy. Please bless. I want your, your blessing. And you still have the idol. I'm telling you now. That God won't bless you. Until you destroy that idol. Third point. Way of using these weapons. It says 2 Kings 12 verse 2. Joash did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. All the years, Jehoiada the priest instructed him. Keep in mind, when Joel has become a king, he was only seven years old. But as he was learning, 
the priest of Jehoiada was teaching the king what to do. And that's why in verse 2 in the book of 2 Kings chapter 12, it says that Jehoash did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. My brothers and sisters must use it right, be righteous in the sight of God. Do the right thing before the eyes of God. Because if you look at Joash's father and also his grandfather, they were wicked people on both ends. But thank God that we have Joash, it says, the Bible says, that Joash did the right thing in the eyes of the Lord. The fourth point that I want to bring, in 2 Kings 12 verse 5, let every priest receive the money from one of the treasuries, then use it to repair whatever damage they found in the temple. When you use these weapons, my brothers and sisters, you use it to keep building God's work, God's ministry, whatever duties that you have given, use it to keep building God's work. Use these weapons of trust. Use the weapon of prayer. Use this weapon of being a character like God that the people can see the presence of God is with you. Use the weapon, the likeness heart of God that you have fulfilled all the things according to the will of God. So if you look at 2 Kings chapter 11 and 12 on how to use these weapons that we use it by serving with joy you know Judah was happy they were rejoicing the trumpets were blown aloud because they finally see there was a king Joash second point it says destroy things that interfere you from serving God also the other way is be righteous in the sight of God and keep building into God's ministry. My brothers and sisters, the four weapons that King David been using at the time when he was reigning at his prime time. I'm not talking about the spear, I'm not talking about the shield, I'm not talking about the javelin that's been left in the house of God or the temple that King Solomon has built. But I'm talking about the spiritual weapons that King David used. It's the trust, prayer, character, the presence of God, and also a heart, likeness of God. And when you have these four weapons, you use it with joy. Not only when you use it with joy, but also you've got to make sure there's no any other idols that interferes you, your blockage between you and God while you're serving. Because if there is, demolish it. Also, another way of using it, be righteous in the sight of God. And also keep building into God's ministry. Defeating your enemies. My brothers and sisters, that is our word for tonight. But if you don't know how to defeat your enemies, we have learned tonight what King David did at his prime time. It's a way that it must be, you know, that we should admire and also learn from it. That not only that we have this trust just like David had, also the connection communication through prayer not only through prayer but also let the world see that the presence of God is with you and also have a lightless heart like God that's the only way that you can defeat your enemies and if there's anyone out there that you think that you can overcome and defeat your enemies with your own might and your own power and your own will I'm telling you now that it doesn't take long for the, um, the devil and his enemies to destroy you. 
ye cannot destroy your enemies on yourself. You must have God with you. You must have God with you. And the way you have God with you, just trust Him. Just have that trust in God. And have that prayer and that, that talk, that need that you have in life. You say, Lord, please, as you can see, that I have this obstacle, that I have this Goliath before me, and it's stopping me. Talk to Him. Because the God that we serve, He is a far bigger and greater God than our Goliath. And you will see the hands of God. Also, let the world see that the presence of God is with you. And that last weapon that David used, the heart like God to fulfill all his commandments and God's will. That's the only way that you can defeat your enemies. Just like our title, defeating your enemies with these four points that we look into tonight. As we're halfway throughout the week, you know, there are some countries, you know, with the restrictions has been coming down. But at this time, my brothers and sisters, just because it's coming down, it doesn't mean life will go back to normal. There is something that's going, going to happen just around the corner. You know, we can see that there will be trials, there will be hardship coming after all these pandemic. So don't think that it's going to ease down and life will go back to normal. But I'm telling you now, this is just the beginning of the trial. But are you ready to face it? Are you ready to face your enemy? And the only way that we know that we are ready, my brothers and sisters, is when we have that trust in God and have that connection with God through prayer and have the presence of God to me and you and also our hearts be like this of God. Defeating your enemies. In Jesus' name. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come to the end of your word, we'd like to say thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the word that you have given to us tonight. As a reminder that every day of our life that we are facing our enemies, we know the devil and his demons are trying to destroy our life. But thank you, Lord, for your hope, for your word. A great reminder, the greatest weapon that you have given to us spiritually, that we have that trust in you, a connection with you through prayer, Lord, and also your presence upon us, and have the heart like the likeness of you, Lord, so we may overcome and defeat our enemies. Lord, I ask for your Holy Spirit that you may interpret more into their hearts and their minds the word that we receive. Give us the spiritual nourish, Lord. Give us the strength and the encouragement to keep striving for your work as we are waiting for that glorious morning that you take us to the eternal life. Blessed every one of us, for those who are watching, I humbly ask your blessing upon them. If there's any reason any other ways that I have not given fully of your word tonight, I humbly ask for your forgiveness. But may your Holy Spirit be the completeness of this word that we listen and inspire us in every way, Lord, so we may keep building your word. Blessed every one of us, for those who are listening from America, Hawaii, Samoa, New Zealand, and here, Australia, Lord, Sistak Worldwide, the Church of the Living God. I ask you a blessing upon each and every one of them. This is our prayer, Lord. Thank you for listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.